Hello, my name is Jordan Spadlin, and my author discussion is going to be on Booker T. Washington, who was one of the most influential African Americans of his time. Washington's youth was a reality of many young African Americans during his time. He was born a slave onto a farm in Virginia with his mom, his sister, and his brother. It was never known who Washington's father was, except that many thought it was a white man, possibly from one of the other plantations. Washington did not actually have a last name until his mother married his stepdad and then took the last name of Washington. Washington was nine years old when the Civil War ended. Some of the tasks he had been doing at that age were, was working in a salt furnace and serving as a houseboy. After the Civil War ended, Washington and his family moved to Malden, Virginia, where the situation was not much better than the plantation. Booker had started working in the salt mines and was allowed to go to school at night until his stepfather sent him away to a nearby coal mine. Being sent to the coal mines might have been one of the best things that happened to Washington. That, once he was sent to the coal mines, that is where he met the Ruffner family, the family that hired him as their houseboy. Miss Ruffner was a former teacher and allowed Booker to go to school for an hour a day. When he turned 16, when he turned 16, he traveled to Hampton Institute, and Washington explains in his book that his so-called entrance exam was to clean and sweep a room, and because he did it so thorough, he was allowed admission. Once Booker was at Hampton, the, he began working as a janitor to pay, help pay for school. <clears throat> Hampton Institute was known to teach trades that would help the students better the community. Washington did some of these trades, but he was drawn to being a teacher. When Washington first became a teacher, he went back to the school where he first went to, which was in Malden. After a few years there, he was asked to give the graduation speech at the Hampson Institute. He was then hired after his speech was so good to teach at the Hampton Institute. He taught night classes, and once he started teaching night classes, the, um, the enrollment skyrocketed. After a few years at the Hampton Institute, he was asked to run the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. He took the job and became the principal, but when he got down to Alabama, he found that the school was built, or the school was not built and only had money for teachers. So he quickly raised money to help build a school for all for the students in Alabama. Washington then started to become politically active. He had dinner in the White House with President Roosevelt, where many criticized Roosevelt but praised Washington. Many felt that it was a great step for equal rights for Washington to be invited to the White House. And all throughout Washington's political activity, W.E. Du Bois, was the polar opposite of Washington. They butted heads on almost every topic, but in the end, Washington just wanted to focus on African-American education and advancement in society. Booker T. Washington in our class. I found the reading of Up From Slavery was very interesting. Booker starts out with the information that he doesn't know. For example, when he was born and who his father was. Today, that seems like really big information not to know. But back then, it was a common for slaves to not know those things. And that is why Washington talks about it. He is almost talking about it in a nonchalant kind of way. He brings it up to show how different times are. And in the first chapter, Washington also talks about um, Washington also talks about how they get their information. They get it through the grapevine. I found that it seems as though the concept of the grapevine and getting information was very important to Washington. It showed that their owners could not stop everything and that they were able to give each other hope and keep their will strong. Washington also brings up how things and morals are different when you're a slave and when you are free. For example, his mom would wake them up in the middle of the night to eat he would know that she stole the chicken, but he would never have called her a thief. But he admits that if it were another time, he would have thought of her as a, as a thief. And I find it interesting how Washington admits that it's wrong, but he also tells us that it's just a different time. 
and that it is different for everybody in that time and that if it would be a different time, he would not have thought it was okay. In chapter two, Washington talks about moving. He talks about how dirty it is, but I find it interesting from the way he tells it to you. Cannot You cannot tell um, many of them cared. They were just happy to be free and to be off the plantation. I also find it interesting that chapter two is named boyhood, when it is not the normal boyhood somebody would think of. I think Washington did this on purpose to show how different things were and how they had not changed yet. That even though they were free, he did not have the same boyhood as other children. He was still working in the salt mines and the coal mines rather than going to school and playing out in the yard. In chapter three, by showing the struggles and hardships that the former slaves had to go through to get an education or even the same treatment or consideration, it helps to show and start to lead to why Washington wants to become a teacher and why he wants to promote the African American to want to become active and involved in their community, both as workers and as activists. The last chapter in the excerpt is the part of Washington talking about his speech at the Atlanta Exposition. Although Washington doesn't see the magnitude of his speech at first, the reader can tell right away that it is an important speech, even by just saying who spoke in front of him. The fact that Washington just thought that he gave a normal speech until everyone, including the president, was congratulating him shows how humble he was and never knew he was doing important things until after the fact. He was just trying to do the best that he could. I think an important part of Up From Slavery is the fact that he never found um, pitying himself. He never talks about what could have been, only what was and how it made him stronger and into the person he is today. Booker T. Washington was a very influential African-American in many different ways throughout his whole life. And as you can see, <laughs> thank you for listening to my author discussion on Booker T. Washington.